I'm Supermoon Tarot, and in today's video, I am joined by my most beloved and favorite co-host, Mon Mon! Say hello, Mon Mon! <laughs> I have to find a leaf. <laughs> She's got plenty to spare. In today's video, we will both be covering the topic chakras. Oh, I'm so excited to get into today's topic because there will be a lot of unexpected answers. Now there is a lot of great information already in the physical world, <laughs> and I will be covering that as well as what I found in the Akashic Records with my spirit guide. That's how I get all my information. So I get both it from the books and from what my spirit guide personally knows and they can offer to me. Now a fun fact about this, that uh, I work with a lot of different spirit guides like at any given point as we all do. And this particular spirit guide is the one I most predominantly work with when I do tarot readings. So often when you hear me saying I'm getting information, I will often be getting information from this particular spirit guide when I'm doing that kind of work. So it was a really cute bonding session when we were looking at this stuff together. So let's get into both stuff because that's the main thing I want to go over in today's video. A lot of things in this subject were actually pretty accurate. And what I mean by when I say accurate, and one of the driving forces as to why I love doing spiritual talks videos, and in my own private time, look this stuff up as well in the Akashic Records, is there is a lot of information that's just like a little off. It's like it's close, but concepts got lost down the line or misinterpreted. And due to deep conditioning, a lot of fear-based beliefs, it causes good intentions to get flooded with kind of a lot of fear is the best way I can put it. And this idea that there's something wrong or somehow we don't have power. And we've got a lot of power and there's always a solution and things are much better off than we may realize. And that's the whole point of all of these videos, is to talk about it. So let's start off with a little bit of information of what we already know. Chakras can be found in Ayurveda. They are found on what's called the subtle body. This is a kosha. And in the sheath of that kosha, it is found on the pranamaya kosha. Pranamaya kosha? Forgive me, I'm not, I'm still kind of like new to Sanskrit, so give me a bit of a break on that one. That's the best way I can explain it. But in the Akashic Records, they refer to this as being held in the void body. Now, I would highly recommend watching my spiritual upgrade video where I go into a lot of spiritual anatomy information, so this makes sense. This is one of the bodies that are found within yours. There's five, there's 37 layers. Those layers are found within each of those five bodies, and one of those bodies is called the void body. Now, when you were getting a spiritual upgrade, I know this is a different topic, but um, they said, the spirit guide said, that you they do the most amount of work on that body because it's the most flexible. <laughs> the void body is often referred to as the boiler room. It's like, think of when you have um, a bunch of wires hanging out of your the back end of like, your entertainment system or something and you're trying to like shove it behind there that area would be like your void body so it's very flexible now that's really important as to why the chakras are there because the uh, chakras need to be able to ebb and flow that's how my spirit guide put it they said that you need to be able to make mistakes and learn from them and have emotional reactions and kind of expand and contract and all of these shifts and chains changes without having such a dramatic effect on your spiritual being. And in the void body, there's flexibility to do that. So that is why your uh, chakras are specifically in the void body. A fun fact, again in Ayurveda, they talk about this a term called the nadis. Um, the three most important, it's kind of like sort of an energy flow you often see in drawn when you see uh, chakras. Those actually do not exist in the void body. They exist in the celestial body. Just a fun fact, they exist not in the same they, in the Akashic Records, they don't refer to these things as sheaths, but they don't refer, they're not in the same sheath. Uh, just sharing that. 
Anyways, so chakras normally when they're taught in Ayurveda, the way the numbering of them works is you would start with the root chakra as number one and you work your way up to the crown chakra, which would be the last one. However, in the Akashic Records, they, my spirit guide says it's extremely important to read uh, the Akash, uh, to read the chakras as starting from the crown and working your way down to the root. And there's a specific reason why. One, because the numbers are just as important as the colors are associated with chakras. And if you have the wrong number associated, you wouldn't be able to notice the synchronicities around you to identify if something's like off or when to connect to the chakra, you get what I'm saying? But two, it's how we process spiritual information. You're meant to start from a concept like the crown chakra, this idea of enlightenment, and we're actually gonna be getting way more specific about what that really entails. And kind of, if this isn't your realm of what you're kind of connected to on the norm, this might seem pretty far out, even ideas like the third, um, third eye, which is the second chakra. And these ideas, when they are initially presented to you in this order, you're meant to be like, oh, I don't know, okay, I kind of get what you're saying, I, I feel it, but I don't know it firsthand super well, until you get to the root chakra. This is because you're meant to understand when you get to the more physical realm, the beliefs, the root chakra, which is the final chakra, these are your like primal instincts, things you interact with every day, having your basic needs uh, met. And once you get there, and then you can kind of look back at all the information you have learned by learning it in this, what would be in the physical realm described as like reverse state in the Kashuk records, this is the accurate way of reading it. You are then able to better understand the concept as a whole by not understanding the information than when you hit the end point going, oh, and then being able to connect to it. The best way I can explain this idea is sometimes your spirit guides or the universe will give you a piece of information that when you get it, you're just kind of like, okay, I guess, I guess I'm doing this thing. And then when you look back and eventually that correct moment and time links up, and you realize how important that information was and how much it helped you and prepared you for that next final thing to know or experience, you're like, oh, that's what that thing meant. And that meaning and epiphany wouldn't have meant as much if the information hadn't been spread apart and sort of given to you initially as a mystery and then proven later at another date. Plus, if you come from the root chakra and then start to understand ideas moving up, to the crown chakra, you're really only coming from a physical um, basis and everything is just going to kind of be compared back to the physical basis. And the physical um, sort of root chakra or the mentalities that are linked to that are not as expansive and flowy as the crown chakra. The crown chakra, you can hear new information and be even open-minded to the idea of the physical um, basic needs, the things we're talking about. But if you're sort of only lost in having non-physical things proven to you in a physical way that doesn't line up or make sense, and it creates sort of a dysfunction and it, it harder to fathom all of these ideas. So this is why it's important to understand the order of them and why, and there's a specific reason as to why there's an order. <laughs> so you might be wondering, where did the concept of chakras pop up from? It just seems like one day everyone was talking about it, and I'm one of those type of people to be like, but how do we know this information? <laughs> so let me tell you a fun fact thing about channeling, because that's gonna come into play. Channeling is something everyone can do. Now I would consider myself someone that is a channeler. I'm aware of my abilities, I'm fully in control of them, and um, ev but everyone can be. and technically kind of on and off regularly do it. In fact, this is a lot of uh, where movie and book ideas come from, and they're just sort of picking up information unbeknownst to them, and, and to them it's just a good idea, but they're accidentally connected to something. And that's the thing about channeling. Sometimes you're just accidentally picking up information, and sometimes it's being given to you. And a long, long time ago, spirit guides wanted the human population to be more aware of this thing that genuinely exists inside of us, in our spiritual anatomy. So it is more than a metaphor. Technically, it's still a metaphor for a lot of ideas and concepts, 
but so is everything, everywhere, ever. <laughs> but it is an actual thing that exists. Now, what a chakra actually is will surprise you and change a lot of questions and exercises people usually have when it comes to chakras. Chakras are in fact considered filters. Compared to, in the physical world, I often hear people describing it as the root cause, solution, or problem to something associated with said chakra. So example, you're having trouble expressing yourself. It could be a throat chakra blockage. It's not, we're gonna, we're gonna get specific into that they are considered filters. The way they look is sort of, they're flat, they're decently flat, and they're like, they are circular, but they look like gears. And those gears have a ton of moving parts, changing and moving around and sorting themselves. And it almost kind of, I would compare it closest to like the inside of a clock. Flat from the side profile, round and big from face on, and um, shifting and changing in that kind of way. Now, the way they function is, imagine over here is the inner workings of what's going on inside you. This could be anything from your spiritual anatomy, like your uh, energy, your energy body. This could be past experiences, both in this lifetime, previous lifetimes. This could be um, ideas and concepts. And you, a lot of factors come into play when people make decisions, express themselves, or what bothers us. So all of these things, and it's a very complex thing for each one of us and each thing we're going through, comes together and gets brought into a concrete expression into the physical realm through the chakra. So all of these come together, come through the chakra and expressed. But here's the thing. I was being told by my spirit guide that chakras are actually really well functioning things. They cannot and never can be blocked. It's not a thing at all in the Akashic Records ever. What instead happens is they can start to not function correctly and be a little out of sorts. They're kind of like sorting and shifting themselves out. But here's where it gets really interesting. You might be saying, the common question is, what do I do if it's blocked? What do I do if it's blocked? I will be going into more details as we go over the individual chakras, but they will fix themselves in a pretty quick amount of time. The way they do this is a chain of events will occur in your life and put you in certain positions from expressing yourself to have an emotional reaction. It can be as minute as feeling inspired to get a little ice cream cone or something like this. But these chain of events that you are not privy to are popping up in order to help the chakra fix itself. So if something is off, it'll fix itself. And I can even go one step further. If there, for whatever reason, is like a hiccup, or it's taking longer, or there's some sort of like, something's happening to prevent it getting fixed as quickly as it should, a spirit guide will always step in. It, you do not need to know them. You don't even have to believe in them. They will always fix it. So there is a really common uh, misbelief. I don't know if that's the word, misconception, misperception. <laughs> hope I said that correctly, um, of chakras somehow not being opened and you have to be super woke to open them. They're already open. There's not a concept of them being closed. Well, something can go wrong and they can get blocked. No, they're always open and they can have a little bit of mess up, but they will work themselves out and they will never, if a spirit guide has to step in and make it fixed, they will fix it. They will not be off for very long. Because remember, these are filters. They are not the source of the problem. However, just because they don't get blocked and they sort themselves out pretty quickly doesn't mean we can't look at them for indications of the more complex system behind the filters of what's going on and get kind of a clue of like, ooh, maybe I should head in that direction. You see what I'm saying here? Now, I was, um, just to kind of go off topic for a second, because I was learning that it's really common that pretty much 
every person at all times is actually aligned and doing great in their chakras. If there's something out of sort, it gets fixed rather quickly. So for the majority of the time, for the general public, we're all doing great, whether it be on our own or the help of our spirit guides. Again, you do not have to know them or believe in them. They're still going to help you. So this left me asking about Kundalini experiences. Um, I've actually had a couple. Uh, they are wild. <laughs> um, don't force it. Uh, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. That's not wrong. You're not being criticized. But if you'd like to have a Kundalini experience, um, just work on yourself. Mine were accidental. I didn't even know they were called Kundalini experiences at the time. But I have known people who really want to have them and they um, keep requesting it and requesting it and forcing it and, and, and they're in a mindset where I feel like it pulls you further away from the potential experience. But Kundalini experiences, I'm gonna go into a whole, if you want, I'll go into a whole nother video about this because that's just for another time, another day. But just to simplify Kundalini experiences, it's like being like super intensely enlightened, connected to all knowledge ever, your true being, it is a roller coaster of a ride when you are experience, experiencing this. And commonly I've heard with uh, a Kundalini experiences, totally couldn't think of the word for a second, <laughs> is that um, they you need to have all of your chakras perfectly aligned and open in order to create this nice funnel of energy going through to the crown of your chakra. Not at all. Um, as we know, you can have your uh, chakras completely aligned, like that's a normal thing for us, and people aren't going around constantly having uh, kundalini experiences. And in addition to them, to that, um, you can actually have them out of sorts and still have it. So if you would like to have this experience or have this sort of deep sense of connection, no matter if it's a full on Kundalini experience, which technically in the Akashic Records, they said they do not refer to it as that they refer to the official term in the Akashic Records is being at one with yourself. Um, if you would like this experience, it is much more obtainable than you realize. You don't have to be a perfectly healed, know everything human being to have this deep sense of connection and uh, receiving of epiphanies. It's um, a wonderful experience. It's intense though. Again, I can make a whole video about it if you're interested. Please let me know in the comments below. Technically, they do in the Akashic Records, they do not refer to chakras being in alignment. They refer to it as functioning or struggling to function because they will never break or not work. They just might be a little off or be having an issue and be needing to work itself out. Um, but you can use the term alignment just if you want to know the official term, it's functioning. So let's get into the first chakra, the crown chakra. It is located right above the head and it is associated with the colors white and violet. It is referred to as I understand and is associated with concepts like unity, being really woke, enlightened. But my spirit guide said this is just a feeling or result of the connection to it that the crown chakra is not your very being, but in fact a portal to your very being. And it is considered just the beginning. You are advised to, by my spirit guide, to not hold this on a pedestal. Um, or you'll always keep it out of your grasp at seeing it's such an important, uh, a thing that it's hard to connect with but you're already connected. In fact, it's really easy to connect to this. You can go to the spirit realm or you can just meditate. You don't even need to do a particular kind of meditation or meditate on your crown chakra. Just the act of meditating creates the sense of travel. And that's an important thing here because we are not meant to stay. This is what it said in the Akasha Records. We are not meant to stay in the same place our whole life. And by being in this meditative state, this is what creates the idea of travel. And it is said if we do not travel in this kind of way and we do not connect in this kind of way, our root chakra will kind of act up more as a way to try to fix and help out with the imbalance. But the problem is we are meant to have a really nice flow and balance between our crown chakra and our root chakra. And if our root chakra has just, I don't know how to say it's too many roots, is too kind of in control is the best way I can put it. What happens is you start to 
create a mentality that things need to be proven to you. You need to receive physical proof. But we are in fact meant to both live in a combination of feeling like we need to receive physical proof, but also believe in things and receive non-physical proof to non-physical ideas. We talk about ideas like channeling. You're meant to have a nice little balance between these two concepts. But the more you believe, well, if I can't see it, taste it, touch it, that kind of thing, it's not real, you're less connected and able to connect to the idea of the crown chakra. And then when your root chakra gets out of balance, well, we'll talk about that more when we get to the root chakra. It's important to connect to your crown chakra and more times than not, you're connected to it. It's not out of your grasp at all. Chakra number two, the third eye chakra. Now, as you know, this is something that I spend the majority of my time enjoying and I'm like all about. So I was very surprised what I received about the third eye chakra, um, but delighted nonetheless. So this second chakra is associated with the color indigo. It is located between the eyebrows and is associated, uh, it is referred to as I see. This is where people say that true seeing, clairvoyance, and psychic abilities come from. But let me stop you there. <laughs> Not all psychic abilities come from this chakra. You actually have a legitimate third eye that you can only see if you have a well developed third eye. <laughs> so it's kind of a catch 22. So you have a third eye but then you have a third eye chakra, which is a filter. Again, it goes back to the idea of multiple things coming together, including the actual third eye filtering through the chakra. Now, the third eye chakra enables you to see things in the non-physical world. This is when people see auras. This is when they see the spirit realm. This is when you see people stuck between the veil. And yes, I can see them. <laughs> That's what the other option was on last week's, uh, last week's spiritual talks video. <laughs> that is an experience in itself. But anyways, uh, we're talking about also the t way of seeing without seeing, like, you know how you're just able to sense the right inspired of action to choose next, that kind of thing. But there are many other physical, I'm um, sorry, psychic abilities that do not come from the third eye and you do not have to obsess over channeling your third eye in order to have all the other sort of capabilities that you might have. You might not have the ability to see in that kind of way to such a detail, but have a totally another psychic ability that would come from a different part of your body or your spiritual anatomy and so on and so forth. Here's the thing though. My spirit guide said that this chakra is extremely important. It is not used or given attention enough by the general public. The reason why it's so important is if you followed your third eye, sort of being able to see what to do next, that seeing without seeing type of mentality, that following the flow, as we talked about in our last week video, the four kind of flow, four kinds of flow. Uh, you would live a much happier, successful, better life that involves not only things like, you know, more easily making money and things in practical terms, but if you needed to better understand something you were going through or overcome a past issue, you would be naturally led from one knowledge and concept and perfect experience matching in synchronistic timing um, to the next. The best way my spirit guide put it that I loved was they said, when you're not using your third eye properly or tuned in, remember it doesn't get blocked, it's like how much you're tuning into it, you would be able you would probably go from just being like someone who's like, you do a cool painting, you do some sketches, figuring out some ideas, do another cool painting, figure out some cool sketches of ideas, that kind of thing. To and if we are tuned into it properly, you're painting masterpiece after masterpiece after masterpiece flawlessly. Technically, my spirit guide said, ideally, if you really gave into this mentality and just fully followed it at all time, you would be completely taken care of. We're not just talking about spiritual 
growth and like caring about yourself more and understanding yourself about more we're talking about you would naturally be led into circumstances that would help you financially get all your practical needs taken care of everything everything would be taken care of but you'd have to be willing to be in the middle of work and be like i don't feel like going to work right now i'm just gonna leave i feel inspired to go do this other cool thing and understandably, <laughs> the vast majority of people are like, hold on a second, I don't know if I want, if I can mentally handle the potential risk if I don't follow through with my regular responsibilities. And so therefore, I was asking like, well, what if they don't follow it all the time right now? That's not where they're at right now. Could there be like a middle in between type of feeling? And they said yes. Um, they said if you experience the, you know, if you're at work and you kind of check in with your third eye inspired of actions in that place, so you might be like, hey, maybe for lunch I'm going to go out today. You know what I mean? Like work within a realistic realm. That would still count too and is a way of tuning in to that uh, chakra. Um, they did say that if you are not tuned into it or being able to understand if something or a problem is being filtered through that particular chakra, um, it would be associated with uh, feeling like you made a mistake. That's how they put it. Feeling like you made a mistake. They said that it doesn't mean you actually did make a mistake. It would be like being with someone and being like, huh, is that the right decision? And I want you to hold on to the nuance of the idea of a mistake compared to the blanket ideas like guilt and regret. We're going to be going over that now in the third chakra, the throat chakra. These two can kind of get overlapping and confusing but remember you can have multiple things coming from multiple chakras and it is okay to identify more than one when figuring out where you need to kind of like the motivation for the topic you need to better venture into so the throat chakra number three is located on the throat it is associated with the color blue i often hear it referred to as turquoise but I debate that because I have seen turquoise that is very green looking compared to blue. And it is meant to be associated with like a blue color, like a clear blue color. So technically turquoise, but we're getting very technical on it. It is also referred to as I speak. This is your communicative and a personal expression through the throat. Now, the throat is not where the will to speak and your ideas of what you want to communicate come from. It just enables you to do it. It's like the vocal cords are the, like in a physical sense, giving you that ability, but that is actually not the reason you are able to express your ideas. My spirit guide said that if you did not have your chakra, this chakra, like if it wasn't there, they described, <laughs> This is like intense. They said that you would be a lifeless puppet. You would not be able, you would just, the vocal cords wouldn't mean anything. You need that chakra filter. It's extremely important. So that is the, the main use and importance for it. Now, I thought this was kind of unique and something that caught me off guard when they said this, but they said that the chakra enables you to bring non-physical concepts into the physical realm. That's its purpose. But you always, always say exactly what you mean. And I was like, whoa, what? And they said, yeah, you always say what you mean. They said, when you have an emotional reaction afterwards and you react to what you just said, you go, oh, I didn't, I didn't mean that. You mean that too, but that first thing you said, that's true. And this is going to be kind of difficult for me to properly explain, but I was trying to dig deeper into this idea and be like, what do you mean it's always, there's not some subliminal? And they said that the emotional weight we give to the expression of things and what is actually being expressed are still two different things. So even though you're having an emotional reaction to something being said, the idea and concept can exist separately from the intensity of the intention. So, I wish I could explain, this is a weird thing to say, but like a lot of these things, I'm doing the best I can to explain them. When you're in the spirit realm, this is the benefit of receiving information in the spirit realm. You 
when you receive this information, you also receive it vibrationally and it like really clicks in and makes sense. And I'm still understanding what they were saying now, but being able to find the right vocabulary to translate sometimes gets lost when I'm trying to bring it into the physical realm. So hopefully this is all <laughs> making sense. This chakra is the one that is associated with guilt and regret when speaking. So when you're expressing an idea, you're just like, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I, was that the right thing to say? Well, I don't know. That's kind of getting into the confidence realm. It's super nuanced. If there's guilt and regret associated, it's with the throat chakra. But it is important to not put blame on yourself or that chakra. If you feel like you're having trouble expressing yourself or you're maybe always saying the wrong thing, it is not because something's wrong with the chakra. We understand that because it's filtering through the throat chakra, it's associated with that avenue. Chakra number four, the heart chakra. Uh, this is associated with the color green. It is found in the middle of the chest and it is referred to as I love. It is associated with love and emotional connection. But here's the thing. So books and movies and definitely in the spiritual community, they hold this chakra and the idea of love as sort of the end all be all. But it's not. <laughs> My spirit guide was like, no, it's not. Because think about it this way. When, if I were to like explain, like tell a friend about you and was like telling them all the things about you, I would not just simply be like, oh, they're in love with this person. That's it. And, or, or they're best friends with that person. That's it. That's who they are. They're that person's friend. I would say, well, they think this, they feel this, they love that, they're with that, so on and so forth. It is one, one characteristic. See, the third eye chakra is a form of connection in the non-physical plane. And the heart chakra acts as a connection to this world, to the physical realm. It is the way we feel connection through, um, I guess I'd say like energy, but I'm trying to not oversimplify it as that because my spirit guide was like, if you're going to make a video on love, <laughs> that's a whole separate video. And we can actually get super spiritually scientific about love, which is really interesting. But um, it's a form of feeling connection. Now, the thing that's so interesting about this is the heart chakra out of every single chakra is the most complex looking and put together chakra. They said that this is an evolutionary thing in humans and it is only at this moment that at some point in the future, this chakra will become more simplified looking. The reason why it is so complex right now is there are so many different forms of love to connect with and fathom and understand that this is actually much harder for us as a general what would be the term species <laughs> like humans um it's actually quite hard for us to understand like we might understand romantic love but then not understand the idea of loving a complete stranger for no reason you know what i mean like there's so many different methods and ways that it can exist and so this complex chakra helps us with it one day we will be able to fathom this a lot easier and then this the chakra through evolution will naturally simplify and match the others but i thought that was really interesting that things like the crown chakra and third eye chakra that people in the spiritual community hold and make it seem like it's such a sort of trophy to connect with and 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 be a part of is actually something we're understanding way easier than love so i thought that was really interesting again if you have issues in love there's nothing wrong with your love chakra, but you understand, or your, your heart chakra, but you understand that it's being filtered through that so you can connect and understand where it's coming from, and that's the thing you want to focus on. Again, when I talk about the idea of focusing on issues or problems or whatever involved with the idea of chakras, I'm referring to like, you know, oh, I have trouble emotionally connecting to people. Okay, well then you would want to understand, okay, that's coming from the heart chakra, so I would probably want to work on ways of feeling like I could open up in an emotional way and express myself in an emotional way. This is when other things would come into play, like the throat chakra would help you out. 
Um, the root chakra would help you out. That's good for trust. And it would all kind of start helping you open the avenue and there would be a place to begin and start working on those ideas. Number five, the solar plexus chakra. <laughs> this is found below the sternum. It is associated with the color yellow and it is referred to as I do. Now this is where will, confidence, courage, and discipline comes from. But here's the thing. My spirit guide was like, it's just about choice. Those other things that I'm talking about and it's often referred to as are just a byproduct of what the function of the solar plexus is. It is a filter for choice. Now I tried to dig deeper and ask about this and they said, that's the thing with this chakra. People have a hard time wrapping their head around, especially emotionally, the idea that confidence could be a choice because then they would have to take ownership and realize that they're a lot more empowered than they realize they are and realize that so for people who are confident they are making the decision to make a confident choice they are choosing to accept and receive that they have made the right decision with certainty and then they are fluidly making the next one there is not really a pause and then moving from the next decision to the next decision to the next decision if you're someone who's like I you know I struggle with confidence then it would be saying okay well if it's about choice then I'm gonna focus when the time presents itself to be confident I'm gonna make the choice to step out there and sort of show my power and express myself and if you get to that next step and you're having trouble accepting it and receiving it, that in itself is still a choice. If you're struggling accepting and receiving it and it's a process, because it's okay that it's a process, maybe you try, it's difficult for you, you back down, you try again, that's okay, you will get the swing of it. But understand that it is not about unblocking it and magically having confidence. It is a choice to be confident. Um, I asked multiple times because I always, sometimes things that are in the spiritual realm, they're not what you anticipate. And if you're not in the right state of mind, it can come across as insensitive. But it just depends on where you're at and what you're ready to receive and hear. It's still the reality. And I hope it comes across as much more of an empowering idea rather than something that frustrates you. But understand this, that as you work on yourself and work on the different parts of yourself, even if it's a struggle, it doesn't mean you can't eventually move forward and then eventually gain that momentum and flow. I asked if how to understand if something's like off in this chakra again not broken or not you know messed up but how to understand if it's filtering through the chakra they said it would depend on how certain you are about the decisions you're making and if you feel like it's just difficult in general to make decisions then they said that you are censoring this chakra that you're just sort of it's not messed up or flowing you're just sort of putting up a wall and you're like nope i don't want to express it nope i don't want to do it again it is a that would then define the idea of it is a choice to remove that wall again it's understandable that these walls might be there we're talking about a super complex system of how people make decisions why their motivations that's that's to be understood but that is still the reality that it is about choice and that you can make that choice. You're always capable of making that choice. Group number six, the sacral chakra. This is found two inches below the navel. It is associated with the color orange and is referred to as I feel. This is where creativity, sensuality, and procreation come from. But interestingly enough, my spirit guide was like, no, 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 it's just about creativity. I was like, really? And they're like, yep, just creativity. They said that creativity can be expressed in a lot of different ways. And when you are bringing something that is non-physical idea and bringing it, you're birthing it into the physical realm, it is through this act. And when, you know, people are feeling a certain way, that is creativity being expressed. So that's when I asked about creati creativity block. I was like, well, what if they have creativity block? And they said, my spirit guide said, whenever you have issues, again, you're using the chakra as a sort of like a, a starting point of working with something, you'd be like, okay, well, creativity involves both, or 
creative block involves both creativity and then expressing the creativity like let's say you're a writer or you draw or something like that you would want to practice things that involve exercising that chakra so it's okay if when you're going to write something or express something which would be then using these two chakras um, together because these are the this is where the problems are coming from uh, it is okay if when you're initially expressing these ideas you don't like them they're not good but by using them at all you're getting back in the flow of allowing that current coming your way and you just want to kind of work your way through it so then this made me bring up the topic of like you know <laughs> i'll just go like this you'll know what i'm talking about and i said some people don't want to have that or it's a you know they feel kind of blocked it's not what they're about and my spirit kind of just straight up said it's not necessary they said they said if you don't want to do that there are other forms of creativity it is not necessary at all if you don't want to if that's not something you connect to and they said if you do too much of it you are too closely connecting and defining your identity by this only for like the thrill of creativity and that you again we talk about the third eye or what was it not the third eye the heart chakra you are not solely defined by your creativity you are defined by a lot of other factors so that is just again one piece of the puzzle that you don't want to get too hooked on the sort of high of it all now last and finally the seventh chakra the root chakra the root chakra can be found on the base of the spine it is associated with the color red and it is referred to as i am now this is where concepts like trust and physical survival needs come in now here's the thing that's really interesting with the root chakra the root chakra is connected to primal um basic fulfillments i'm hungry um, I'm having a reaction instantly. You do want to be aware of it being too reactionary. Again, we go back to the idea of the crown chakra. See how we went through information. We're coming back around connecting to it. If this root chakra is too predominant, it then becomes a super reactionary lifestyle. This is why people who respond a certain way very intensely they are giving in to only their root chakra, giving it too much power. It is not about rising above this chakra and never using it again, because it is, and this is how I speak, I put it, you made the decision to exist in the physical world. That's why you're here. You chose it. It is complete free will. You wanted this to happen. And because you wanted this to happen, the root chakra enables you to be connected to the physical. This is why I had trouble defining this exactly when I was describing the heart chakra, because technically that does it too, but more on like an emotional level. And this is more of a like tangible level. When you eat something, you know, you eat it, you feel that food, that kind of thing. When you, um, when you sleep you that's a very connective type element and it's a different feeling and concept than the heart chakra so i just wanted to be clear about that but that is one of the main reasons why it is and, and if and if you feel like you're starting to float away and you feel too spacey that would be a good time to reconnect it to grounding of the root chakra but this is how it all beautifully comes together when it's the chakras in general the chakras are simplistic ideas groups sections but as a person we are above and beyond way more complex than this the chakras are awesome to understand because when we are exploring our more complex self and even rising above all of this when it comes to you know spiritually being really like enlightened and woke and stuff like that we need to understand the core baseline ideas because those intertwining and interacting with each other then create the more uh, the, the the ideas that I often find and struggle to give vocabulary to. This is mirroring and intent uh, like done with intention, created with intention, just like how we view the chakras. So remember I said, so we started with simple concepts and then they create something more complex beneath us. They're sort of the filtering, the beginning of the ideas to understand and then they're, they're more incorporated. 
Well, it's not unlike when you're understanding the primal needs of the root chakra. The root chakra, each primal need thing, basic survival need, these ideas are philosophies encompassing themselves. So I'm trying to give you like a metaphor, like a good example would be like, sleeping might be associated with the third eye chakra. You know, um, maybe feeling um, uh, the need for just like human touch might be like just needing that sense of like knowing someone else is there is very similar to the heart chakra. So you see how these chakras exist on a sim like a plain, like just simple ideas and then they get more complex. Just like the root chakra, there's simple ideas that get more complex chakra to chakra as it works its way back up to the crown. So see how it all comes full, full circle? It's like super cool and meta. I like love that. Keep in mind, chakras are starting ideas for these concepts. So the next time you hear someone saying like, oh, you're blocked there. No, it's not. We know it's not. But it's more understanding oh, if I have a difficulty with this, I understand it's coming from this chakra, and then I can sort of follow the breadcrumbs to the more complex ideas that would be associated with the chakra. Do not think that you're broken. I, I absolutely love what my spirit guide said. They were like turning the pages in the, the uh, Kashyyyk Rucker books, and they looked at me, and they were like, people are not as broken as they think they are. Stop saying that mantra. Stop putting that out there into the spiritual community. We are doing great. We're functioning awesome. Maybe the problem isn't within us, but how we view it all. So I just got really intense. <laughs> I didn't mean to get so intense. I'm just very passionate about this subject. So understand that the chakras are wonderful and doing great. And there's not really anything you need to do if there's something out of whack. But you can understand and use them as starting points to it all. You can help and work with the chakra by understanding like sometimes in rare cases it is just simplistically like oh I'm having trouble expressing myself and then you go and practice like telling like a friend close to you like just expressing all your ideas and that can help you kind of work through issues that were rooted in the throat chakra. It can just be as simple as that and doing activities associated with that. But I don't want you leaving this situation and being like, man, I just, I feel like I want to connect to this part of my chakra and I'm doing all these meditations, I'm doing all these things and it's just not working. Yeah, because you're focusing on the issue coming from the source of the chakra and it is just a beginning point. I don't mean to be redundant about that, but yeah. Now, um, also keep in mind, there's two last things I wanted to say. You can sometimes be acting through the wrong chakra. Um, a good example I heard of this one time was someone freaking out that their business wouldn't do, be doing well and they were acting through the root chakra and with it being kind of sort of like out of balance and the way they were handling it, it caused them to be too reactionary in that kind of way. And that's not where they needed to sort through their ideas and concepts. And they needed to come through a different chakra to have a clearer state of mind to handle it in a better way. So consider that too when you're going through your chakras. But this is more of like a nuanced thing. Um, some people who work with chakras and energies and stuff like this use these, I think they're called like tuning forks. They're these like metal like wand looking things that they hit I do not want to like step on any toes here hear the whole concept um, my spirit guide actually said that these are super detrimental um, but hold on to that idea it doesn't mean to not use them they said when you hit those tuning forks for that chakra that you know is being focused on needs to be worked on when you hit that tuning fork, it goes down the chakra through to the other complex ideas. But because these people do not even know the inner workings of where all of this these issues are coming from, it ends up kind of waking up too many things, makes them feel super weird, and it's kind of like... Sorry about that. My, my camera just stopped for a second. Um, instead of 
gently working through all the different ideas that you're trying to figure out and understand and like really taking its time and letting one thing lead you to another it's like shaking all the problems all at once and it's like too much however everything does happen for a reason and sometimes intense things like that are actually still helpful so even though it can be super detrimental maybe that was the thing that person needed to go through to force them to view everything and then kind of start on a spiritual journey through working through that so it's kind of one of those things where it's like yeah it is this but everything happens for a reason so <laughs> keep that in mind so as unintentionally per usual this video is like crazy long um i hope you enjoyed it please like leave a like and a comment uh these videos are like the love of my life just like mon mon i am so deeply appreciative that you guys want to hear about it and talk about it please let me know in the comments below what you believe uh, what you are feeling and connected to because I just really love what you guys are so smart. This is like the coolest spiritual crew we got going on ever. It's here. <laughs> um, also consider giving support to this video by uh, hitting a like button and subscribing, hitting that notification bell. Helps out like you would not believe. Share them, that would definitely help. And you can check out all these spiritual talks videos on my spiritual talks playlist. Have a lovely day. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I am wishing you the best. And me and Mon Mon will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>